As a prepper, I always take it upon myself to have plenty of food stocked up in the house. And milk, cow milk, is no exception. I keep six of these in my refrigerator at all time and rotate through them. But humans being what they are, are always introducing human error into any system that you might set up. And human error caused me to have one of these sit in my refrigerator, kind of jump out of rotation. And when I looked at the expiration date, it was over a month old. Is it still good? Absolutely. And you're gonna be shocked when you find out how useful this actually is. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything There are some food products, including dairy and I think maybe fish, that people tend to associate with big problems if you let them get old past their expiration date. In fact, it was Benjamin Franklin who once quoted that fish and house guests, I believe, go bad after three days. So the idea that food goes bad at some point is something that really sticks with us. And again, I think there are certain types of foods, dairy and milk included, that people can get pretty squeamish appropriately so, about eating past expiration date. So when I noticed that I had this half gallon of milk sitting in my fridge and I saw that the expiration date was over a month old, I was kind of deflated because this kind of stuff isn't cheap. This is organic valley, grass-fed milk. I spend $6.50 on each of these at this point. So the idea of losing an entire half gallon of milk for a thrifty guy like me was a real punch in the gut. So what I immediately set to do is figure out, well, what else could I do with this? So I wrote spoiled on the top and I wrote no right on the uh, little uh, lid there. Put it back in the fridge, let everyone know that this one was spoiled. So make sure that nobody would accidentally use it while I set to doing research online. Now, when I went online, I was expecting to find things like maybe I could use it as a, a paint base. I know that there's something called milk paint. You can uh, use milk as a way of making paint. I thought, well, maybe that's something I could do. I could mix some charcoal in it, make my own paint. That'd be kind of interesting. At least I could, you know, get something out of it. I was thinking, well, maybe it could be like a, a garden or a compost amendment where you could pour it in, it would offer some nutrients into your compost, maybe alkalize uh, the uh, pH of the soil a little bit. I was looking for those types of things. So I was really surprised when I found out that what I can do with this is actually to consume it. But before I explain how this stuff is best consumed, I wanted to uh, just talk a little bit about the level of spoilage that was going on here, because it's not like milk is perfectly fresh one day and then the next day it's, you know, rancid and exploding with uh, bacteria. There's a spectrum there and I want to describe where on the spectrum this was. Well, first off, when I realized that it was old, it wasn't when I looked at the expiration date, it was when I was pouring it into some eggs that I had in a bowl for making scrambled eggs. It kind of glopped out a little bit. And in the early in the morning, I was even questioning my own senses. Like, did, did, I, did I really see that? And that was what made me think, well, let me look at the expiration date. That's when I realized that it was a month old. So the texture was a little bit gloppy. I poured it into a cup. It wasn't tremendously gloppy. It was still like a liquid. I touched it to my lips. It smelled, well, I smelled it first. It smelled fine. I touched it to my lips. It tasted kind of like not bad, but I'm not really familiar with the taste of cow milk because I don't drink it much. I really buy this for my boy. So I asked him to kind of like smell it and taste it a little bit and, you know, spit it out afterwards just so he could confirm, like, does that even taste bad or not? He confirmed that it definitely did uh, taste off. Uh, so at that point, I realized I had some degree of spoiled milk. It wasn't particularly sour, didn't have any kind of a strong odor, was a little bit thick. That's what I'm dealing with here. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of my experience of this. So online, I was told that you can use uh, slightly spoiled milk, also known as sour milk, or which is not the same as soured milk. There's all sorts of, uh, it's a real rabbit hole when you start jumping into this. Soured milk and sour milk, totally different things. I, I know if you just blew by what I just said, it probably sounded like I said the same thing, but I actually said two different words. One soured and the other is just sour milk. So, uh, you know, it's a, there's a real rabbit hole of information here, but the overarching uh, theme here is that if it is just slightly spoiled where it is getting a little bit sour or the texture is just a little bit off, you can use it for baking. And not only is it useful for baking, it's actually really useful for baking. In fact, when I made the scrambled eggs using this sour milk, 
they were the fluffiest eggs I'd ever made. And that's one of the cool things about using uh, this type of slightly soured milk is that if you use it for baking, you can really fluff up the things that you're baking, whether it is uh, eggs like I was doing, or if you were using it for uh, pancakes. Uh, I made some pancakes and they were a lot fluffier. You can do it with scones or muffins or anything that you can use um, essentially milk or buttermilk in, you can use slightly spoiled milk and it will actually make your recipes fluffier. Now, if you're doing baking where you would be using baking powder, because soured milk tends to start becoming acidic, you would want to substitute your baking powder for baking soda, which is alkaline. Baking powder is a mixture of alkaline and acidic compounds. And once you, you put water between them, it allows them to react and make carbon dioxide bubbles and fizz up. If you are gonna be putting in soured milk, which is slightly acidic, you wanna be putting in the baking powder because the baking powder is just the alkaline, just the base uh, part of that chemical reaction. And the milk provides the acid part of the reaction and that's what uh, gives you a lot of the fluffing up but there must be other aspects to it that create that fluff as well because in my scrambled eggs i didn't have, you know you don't put any baking powder or baking soda or anything in scrambled eggs and even in the scrambled eggs it made it so much more fluffy so i hope you found this video helpful and if in the future you ever find yourself with some soured milk now you know that you don't have to just dump it down the drain you can actually use it for baking and it is even more valuable than it was before it soured that's it and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.